I'm biased, but I think we've got the best looking plant in the world. I've, I've been to dozens around the world and many are sheds, many are, um, you know, have no appreciation or, or no um, focus on the visual impact. Uh, one of my personal interests in this project is making sure that we do um, build a plant that has high visual appeal. And what we've done here is, is achieve just that, but without significant increasing cost to do so. When you look at the aesthetics from the gulf across to the plant itself, it's a connection between the cliff face and it blends in with the natural vegetation. So at different times of the year, we see different seasonal fauna and flora in the area. We went and looked for the local indigenous species of plants. Uh, so there's about 350,000 of those here on the site. And so a lot of local people were involved in collection of seed in the first year and then propagating those seeds to, to plants and then they have been involved in planting them too. So uh, that's given uh, a lot of ownership of this job to the community. But also it sent a powerful message to the contractors that they are guests in the community. Uh, they're going to make this place better than when they started off with. We have done everything possible to make sure there will be no marine harm out of the processes that we adopted either for construction or operation of the plant. The structures we've created offshore, the structures that we have protruding out of the seabed to bring water into the plant, and the structures we have that disperse the brine, the, the nozzles, um, they're actually almost like a reef habitat. So we actually created a, actually a little you know, kind of marine habitat out there that, that otherwise wasn't there. Um, marine growth, the fish then attracted to that growth and then obviously larger species as well. So rather than there being an impact as a consequence of the project, there's actually a great um, you know, in, improvement um, in, in that marine environment. A very important part of this project has really been the education of the wider community and we invested in that right up front about getting people to appreciate and understand what this desal plant actually meant. For the future of South Australia and the future of South Australians, it's important that we do have a sense of water security. Um, the Interpretive Centre, uh, that's amazing, you know, the, the rammed earth construction. Um, it, again, it really integrates um, with, the, with the landscape. It really provides a solution that looks fantastic, but you know, it really suits uh, the nature of, of that building. What we've looked at in gendering is an ability to be able to bring people closer to the plant and not just focus on the technical aspects of producing water, but it's a journey around water in the state. What it does is it introduces those themes, the Ghana people, the Aboriginal elders that we liaise with right through the process, the interpretive trail, what this site actually meant to the generations before. We always wanted to make sure that we wanted to be proud of this project and the building itself and the displays give people that interaction. It's an incredibly challenging project um, with some tight time frames. So. We needed very strong leadership, very strong management to deliver the project, but at the same time taking the time to bring into the team young people that will learn from this experience and go on and achieve other great things in South Australia and beyond. So yeah, I'm really, really delighted with the outcome that, that not only achieved a project, but there's actually a human, human capital, if you like, that's, that's grown from this. And they'll, they'll go on and achieve some amazing things here and abroad. My leadership team, my command team, uh, they've been absolutely magical. They are my turbochargers, okay? Uh, and just when you think you're gonna slacken up, there are the afterburners there in the team that constantly provide the energy, the enthusiasm. Uh, having said that, uh, that's, that's my direct command team, but then there's the contractors uh, team and the project controls group. Setting leadership um, and setting goals and then self-driving them and then living up to those values every day is important. Some of the excellence we see is not, it does not happen because it's an industry standard. It happens because they wanted to do it well. The finishes around uh, super duplex stainless steel, the quality of welds, you cannot see that. So they train the right welders, they supervise them, they set the right method statements, the right quality targets, and they did not accept second best. So if it wasn't good enough, it didn't come to my side. So I thank them all. I thank every one of them. This project has been a long time in the making. Uh, it really is a masterpiece 
of engineering and a very significant project, not only for SA Water, but for the state of South Australia. It's the biggest project that the state has financed in its history. For me, legacy is about is building a quality asset that will serve us into the future and having a more long-term mindset than just, than just for what you need now or what you might need in, the, you know, in, in 10 years to come. It is going to give us something that doesn't depend on rainfall and it is our insurance policy for droughts in the future. This is basic infrastructure. If it's not there, uh, business will simply not have the confidence to come or invest. And we've created a long life asset that will service us for 50 to 100 year life.